Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. So in this video I'm going to show you how I go about painting the plastic African war elephant from Victrix. Here you can see one that I've already done and as you can see I painted it up as Carthaginian so I'm going to show you the steps that I use to get it table ready. So here you can see that I've sub-assembled the kit, I've stuck together all of the parts of the elephant and it comes with a few optional extras like the uh, sort of tassels that you can see on the rope at the back and uh, I've broken everything else down into its own sub-assemblies as well. Here I've just sub-assembled the howder, the shields and the quiver of javelins. And I've picked out the two Carthaginian crew members and given them both javelins for this model. The driver comes with a couple of arm options and multiple head options which you can see here. Once that's all assembled I use a fine surface primer from Tamiya and I use the light grey and base coat all of the separate pieces. So I'm going to start work on the elephant first as it's the largest part of the model and um, for this I'm going to focus on the skin areas first. So I'm going to kick things off using the Citadel Contrast Paint Space Walls Grey and I'm going to liberally apply this to all the areas of skin. I'm going to try and avoid the ropes, um, however it doesn't matter too much as I will be base coating those in another colour later on. Once that's done I'm now going to use Sky Grey from Vallejo and I'm going to dry brush this over the raised areas of the head, the ears and the upper legs just to pick out some defined areas of flesh. Okay so now it's time to use possibly one of my favourite colours, this is Dectan from Vallejo and I'm going to dry brush this in patches just over the elephant just to show some tonal variation in the skin. Final bit of dry brushing now and I'm going to use the Formula P3 Paint Gun Core Brown and I'm going to focus this on the bottoms of the legs and the underside of the elephant just to look like dust and caked on dirt. Okay so now I'm going to add some Gilliman Flesh uh, contrast paint into some of the crevices um, and sort of nice sunken areas on the head and on the legs and this just adds some points of interest it might look like open sores or areas of healed wounds that the elephant might have sustained. Using Ushabti Bone from Citadel, I now base comb all of the ropes uh, that I can see on the elephant. Once that's dry, and make sure it is dry, I'm going to use the Contrast Paint uh, Skeleton Horde and I'm just going to paint that over the ropes and that deals with our wash and highlights for all of those. I'm now going to use the contrast paint black templar and I'm just going to paint the end of the tail. Um, I'm going to put this on fairly liberally um, and then just soak off any excess using the brush. Thank you. 
Now using Vallejo Flat Red, I'm just going to block in the tassels on the rope decorations on the back of the elephant. I'm just going over the tusks and base coating them with some thin down Corax white and I'm going to add a wash to these in a minute to give them a sort of a dirty ivory colour. It's at this point as well that I'm just going to dot in the white of the eye. Time to do the gold now and I'm going to use the GW Paint Retributor Armour and I'm going to block in the bell on the harness decorations and also the uh, tusk coverings on the ends of the tusks. Using the Vallejo Air Colour Chrome, I'm just going to pick out some of the harness fittings and just give them that nice bright silver colour. The best wash that I found for gold is the Contrast Paint Gilliman Flesh, so I'm going to put that over all the areas that we just base coated with Retributor Armour. I'm going to use a little bit of Nolan Oil and I'm going to basically block that in over the areas that we base coated red and including the bit we just painted chrome. I'm using some Fin Down Skeleton Horde 2 to 1 water and I'm just painting that over the tusks. That's pretty much everything with the painting on the elephant done, so now we're just moving on to creating the backing for the transfers that are going to go onto here. So I want a nice bright but not too bright uh, colour, so I'm using Corax White and painting that everywhere where there's going to be a transfer. While that's drying, I just decided to use some Evil Sun Scarlet from Citadel just to add some highlights onto the harness decorations. I'm going to use a line of Farmer Black from uh, P3, but any black will do, just to paint in the pupil on the eye. Okay, so finally I'm just going to add some corn red into the mouth of the elephant and just make sure that that doesn't spill out onto the areas already painted. Now I'm going to be using the Carthaginian elephant transfers from Little Big Men Studios. Now these are made specifically for this pack. Uh, the transfers are very nice but they can be a little bit fiddly, especially if you're not used to them. So my advice is to very simply take your time, use a small pair of scissors, I nick these from my wife. I've believe there's some form of makeup scissors I have no idea um, but they have a slightly curved end and I find that quite good for cutting around some of the smaller parts so you'll see that these are all labeled up with where they need to go um, you need to cut these out and then basically I'd always dry fit where it's going to go you then peel off um, the front of the transfer and stick it down and you'll find it's sort of self-adhesive and when it's on there you then add on a brush load of water and I just keep adding until the backing comes away and then just use a paper towel to dab it clean into place. Once all the transfers are done I just use some corn red to fill in the areas where they didn't cover or you could see some parts of the white underneath um, and then that's the elephant done. Place him to one side and then we'll start on the next part. Onto the howder now and the first colour I'm going to use is Talisar Blue and I'm just going to block in all of the corners and the edging on the howder. I'd already done my other one red so you could pick any colour really but I found the contrast paints work well for this because it already does the highlighting for you. I'm 
I'm going to use the contrast paint wildwood and I'm going to use that to paint the planks at the bottom of the howdah. Using Ushabti Bone, I'm going to paint all the fur around the bottom and I'm going to thin this down slightly just to make it flow a little bit better over all of the raised details. As I did before, because this is going to have transfers on it, I'm going to base coat all the areas that are going to have transfers with Corax White. Because the inside of this isn't going to be that visible, I'm very simply just going to paint the inside with Basilicanium Grey, which is a contrast paint, and just it gives the idea that it's in shadow, but once you've got the miniatures there, you're not going to see a great deal of it. I'm now going to use Agrax Earthshade and paint that all over the Shabti Bone, uh, just to give some definition to the fur. Uh, it's time to use the transfers again and it's the same process, um, just cut them out carefully. Just make sure you remember which one is your front, I don't think I really did this. Um, and then when it's done it should look something like this. I've gone back in with the Tanisar blue and picked out any areas where um, the transfer hadn't reached entirely. Notice that the transfers have got a bit of a, a sheen so after this uh, when it's on there you're going to want to hit it with some matte varnish. So at this stage I attach the howder to the back of the elephant because that will give me an idea of how the whole thing is looking and I'll see if there's any areas to uh, fix. There's two small holes which you can use to affix the howder and this is where I realise I put the front transfer on the back but that doesn't really matter. The elephant and the enemies aren't going to know. And the next thing to work on is the crew. So I'm painting these guys up the way I am my other Libyan infantry. Um, so I start with a coat of a, the contrast paint Apothecary White and I do that over all of the armour and cloth areas. Using the GW Paint White Scar I now highlight the areas of the armour itself leaving the cloth alone. Um, and I try just to sort of pick out the edges, pick out the things that are going to be highlighted so when we put the wash over it these will stand out. Using Evil Sun Scarlet from GW I now use a detail brush and I line in all the trim on the armour. The red is a nice contrast to the white and when this has got the wash over it and it dulls it down a little bit I think it looks great. Given that some of this isn't going to be visible, I'm not going to mess around. I'm just going to use the contrast paint snake bite leather to pick out the straps and the scabbard on the model. Once that's dry, I'm just going to use a medium brush and I'm going to apply Agrax Earthshade all over the actual armour, trying very hard not to get it on the cloth and uh, make sure that you remove anything that pulls too much and just put it on one side to dry. Time to work on the bronze areas and uh, I'm going to use Retributor armour and I'm going to uh, base coat the helmet and uh, just it doesn't matter too much if you get this on the face but try to avoid getting it on any of the armour that you've already painted. 
as I've already said, Gillum in the Flesh is the uh, best wash for um, gold, so I'm just going to paint that all over the helmet. While that's drying, I'm going to use the Citadel paint of Shabti Bone to pick out the haft of the javelin. There are some tassels and ties on some of the armour, and I've chosen to pick these out in intermediate green just to add a little bit of contrast to everything else. While I was waiting for that to dry, I've decided to go back and give the elephant another dry brush of deck tan, this time with the howder on there. This adds some weathering and just starts to tie all the separate pieces of the model together. It's time to do the flesh, and so I choose to do an undercoat with pallid witch flesh. I find it's got just a bit of a warmer tone to it, so when we put the contrast paint over it, um, you don't have quite such a pastel look. So for the flesh, I'm going to use the contrast paint Darko Flesh and just liberally put that all over the areas we've base coated with the uh, Pallid Witch Flesh um, and then just try and pull off anything that's pulled too much. I'm going to use the Vallejo Colour Chrome to pick out all the metallic parts. I've decided to use Wildwood um, to pick out the hair. I'm going to use a warm flesh tone, in this case Cardic Flesh from P3, to be my first highlight on the, uh, on the flesh, picking out all the sort of muscle areas and raised areas. Final highlight on the flesh, and I'm going to use Midland Flesh from P3 and just pick out the extreme highlights. Now I'm going to finish the javelin off using Skeleton Horde over the areas base coated with Ushabti Bone. Okay, so I'm going to finish these off now by using Nolan Oil over all the metallic areas to base with the silver colour. Okay, so now I can dry fit the models into the howder on the back and when you find a position that you're happy with you can glue them in. As you'll see, some of the hands are positioned to hold the crenellations so you can uh, get a little bit of extra grip. I just add some super glue onto their feet and pop them in. I did the driver separately but using the same flesh methods as you've already seen on the other infantry and I just picked a different colour for his tunic, in this case green, so just add some super glue and get him stuck on. Finally I painted the quiver of javelins with snake bite leather and just picked out the javelins with silver and shabty bone again and just added that to the back. Once it's done, it will look a little something like this, and it's at this point that you'll want to add a coat of matte varnish. I used a Munitorium varnish from Games Workshop. Finally, it's time to just do the shields. Now, you don't have to worry about painting the undersides of these because they're going to be actually placed on a howder, so I paint the rims with Retributor armor from Citadel, and I then wash it with Gilliman flesh as we have with all the other gold areas. As these are going to have little big men transfers on, I base the back of the shield with uh, Corax White. Once I've got that, I cut the shield transfers out, peel the front off and fit them into place, and then paint water onto the back of them and just give it a few passes until the backing comes off and then use paper towel to dab that into place. So, as you can see, it doesn't take a great deal of time to actually put this together. I've painted this in a single evening, um, and when it comes together, it's, I think it looks brilliant. It's such a great model, um, and it's uh, a nice precision kit, and there's nice pieces in here that you could swap out and do some conversions with as well. I haven't done anything too adventurous of this one. Um, what I'll do now, I'm going to secure it to a base, and um, I'll go ahead and base it in the, the way I'm going to, in my scheme. Um, and I'll come back to you and show you what it's like. And here's the finished article, ready to go on the tabletop and take the fight to Rome. 
As you can see, I've based it on a large base because I'm going to be using this for multiple systems, including impetus, but it allows you to play around a bit with uh, some rocks, boulders, bushes, and as you can see, I've also added a skirmisher from the Warriors of Carthage set. I will be adding snow over the rest of this and weathering the, uh, the howder a bit more so it fits in with the rest of my army, but really, he's good to go from here. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is just my take on, on how to paint this awesome kit, and I thought it might be of interest if there's anyone else out there that's thinking of, of getting it and wants to, you know, see what everyone else has done. These make a great centerpiece for your army. Anyway, I'll leave some pictures up at the end. I hope everybody's well, staying safe, and I'll see you all again soon. Cheers.